suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Wars are fought between nations and ideologies, and often the unit of battle is forgotten, man. Forgotten, smothered beneath the confusion of propaganda, slogans, shibboleths, and God's endorsement of the sacred cause. Forgotten in the glorious statistics of battle, dismembered, flash-burned, bone-rotten, dying and dead, man is what fights the wars. Only the perspective of literature brings the fighting man into focus, and so out of each war comes a handful of great stories in which all the forces of two opposing worlds are reduced to the life and death struggle of two opposing men. Such a story you are about to hear. Listen. Listen, then, as Herbert Marshall stars in Flood and the Goodwins, which begins in exactly one minute. the living, let alone the dead. I don't think we'll be finding any more. Not the way the stuff's settling down now. Where do you figure the patrol boat is? She ought to be about a couple of hundred yards to port. Take it easy now, Uncle. Don't want to ram her. Now don't you worry about me, Dundas. Just you start singing out. Patrol boat, ahoy! Patrol boat, ahoy! Captain Mack is a man in the day. They sound to be dead ahead, Mack. Better cut it back. I see her. We'll come about her. They're coming around your stern. Get any more? Yes, three. Bear a hand there. Three more coming aboard. Any alive? No, all three are drowned. Come on, Mac. Let's get them up there. Don't you bother, Dundas. Hey there. Can you send down a couple of men? Right. My mate here has only got one flipper. Now, look, Mac, that doesn't make any difference. Oh, what's the matter? You ashamed of it? No, but I can swing my load like any man. Stay forward there, man. Right. Before right. I get my top back. Right. Now, don't let it get you, boy. There's lots of amputees working these days. Amputee. Look, must you use that expression? Amputee is what you call a man who's lost his arm. Amputee, what's wrong with it? Better than what you call those things they're hoisting on board. Amputee, I hate that word. Bloaters, you call them. A man's been floating around dead in the water, he gets bloated. See? Bloaters. Very pretty. Do you know what you call a gabby old goat like you? Never mind now, never you uh, mind. That's a bunch. Well, how many have been brought into you so far? Well, counting your three, uh, that makes 30. 30? You don't say. Lucky we got this fog. Without it, we'll be sitting ducks for any stukas or Messerschmitts that might be about. Or you boats Or you boats That's right. Was it you boats sent her down? No. The only survivor we got alive, he says... Uh, he says it was a time bomb. Oh, sabotage. Yes, went up in the third hole. Boom! 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 hear that, Dundas? I heard. My nephew lost his flipper in the R.A. You've taken it real hard. Oh, you shouldn't take it hard. No, who says I shouldn't? Now, don't get sore, laddie. I'm just trying to cheer you up, you know. 
Well, cheer me up by getting your bloody feet off this boat so we can shove off. All right, laddie, all right. Cast in off. Going back to Dover? Might as well. Fog's in for the night. We'll just make it by dark. Right up. Cheer you up. You didn't have to bite his head off. Lay off me, Mac. We didn't mean any of you. I said lay off, Mac. Lay off. All right, all right. Thirty of them. Is that what's eating you? A saboteur. Can you imagine a man doing a thing like that? Well, it's war, you know. War. Fighting is war. They didn't all drown? No, only 29 of them. Didn't you say one was alive? Yeah. Uh, it must be awful to drown. Awful way to die. I wonder if it'll clear tomorrow. <laughs> Black Nana Beam. I see it. Could never get in Dundas. War ought to be right ahead of us. Mary! Coming in! Get ahead, Mac. Right. There. I'll jump it. Hello, you two. Hello, Donnie. How was it, Uncle? Terrible, dear. Just terrible. Were there many? Thirty. Oh, dear. Mac, how's the petrol? Ample. We didn't use a quarter of it. Are you going to fish tonight? Ask Mac. It's his boat. Fishing tonight, Uncle Mac? In this fog? <laughs> I should say not. But Dundas can navigate for you. Well, I don't know. I brought a basket of food in case you're going out again. Oh, I don't know. I think that husband of yours needs some sleep. Are you going to start again? What's wrong? All day long he's complaining like an old woman. Just because he had the bad luck to lose his fin. Fin. Flipper. Why can't you say arm? See what I mean? Well, you know you are a little rough about it, Uncle Mac. Well, what ought I to do? Help him feel sorry for himself? Sit down, both of you. There was a man to see you, Uncle Mac. Who? We didn't say. He said he dropped back. Oh, what do you look like? Very tall, distinguished looking. Who's that, Mac? Not me. Tall, you say? Yes, and carrying a little briefcase. Oh. Come for the payments on the boat, Mac. Oh, hardly likely. Oh. oh, would this be him? Oh, yes. You're back just in time to catch them. Good. Very good. You looking for me? Yes. You're Captain Mac. That's right. And who is this, please? Mr. Dundas, my nephew. The, uh, the husband of this lady. Look, mister, who are you and what do you want? Oh, it's very simple. You must forgive my questioning. When one is engaged in my work, one can't be too careful. Your work? Intelligence. Oh. What's that got to do with us? I want to charter your boat for a trip. Government boat? Eh? Yes, a secret mission. Where is it you want to go? To Ostend, tonight. Belgium. Oh, that's a fair haul. And there's the U-boats. The fog will cover you. Hey, Tim. Here, uh, what do you pay? The Crown provides handsomely in these cases. A hundred pounds. You're on. Wait a minute, Mac. Huh? Mind uh, showing us your credentials, mister? I shouldn't mind at all, fellow. But the fact is, I'm not carrying any. You're not, eh? <laughs> this isn't what you'd call a casual visit. Right? Oh, use your head, Dundas. He's going where the Nazis are. No credentials. Then would you mind explaining why you're sniffing around a little fishing boat like this when you could cross on one of those big, fast torpedo boats they've got over at the yard? I find this man insufferable, Captain. Now, now what do you say? Time is growing short. Why don't you take a torpedo boat or a minesweeper? They've got sweepers there, too, you know. Now, you must know the answer to that. There's a naval vessel. They might be seen by one of the enemy shore stations. In this fog. You are a liar, mister. And you are a very astute fellow. Into the boat, all of you. A gun! Yes, my ticket to Austin. Put that thing down. Get out, Matthew, you serious. Oh, indeed I am. Now, in. You too, miss. Don't. Do what he says, Mary. I'll start your motor. Make me. Shall I? Start it, Mac. Oh, but this is crazy. You, untie the ropes. And you, miss, you sit up there. You don't stand a chance. We'll see. I'll sit up in the front with the lady. Front? You don't know much about boats, do you? No. No, and I shan't pretend to. Listen, mister. We can't get out. They've got submarine nets across the harbor entrance. But I happen to know they're open until eight. Now, I better warn you. No tricks. I'm very good with this gun. You are, eh? Dundas, he says he's very good with that gun. Then we better do as he says. Let's go. (laughs) 
So you're a Nazi. That's right. You talk like an Englishman. Oh, really? A Nazi. <clears throat> what are you, a spy? You might say that. Well, what are you going back to the continent for? The war's not over. What time do you think we'll hit the Belgian coast? Around midnight. You didn't answer my question. What was that? Why are you leaving England? Scared? If you like. But as a matter of fact, I'm returning because I've completed my mission. Oh, what was that? A matter of a bomb. Sabotage, eh? Naturally. Huh. That ship, the one that went down off the coast. Is that your work? Yes, I planted the bomb in the hole this morning before she sailed from Dover. You stinking filthy... Hold it. No, no, let him curse. Uh, I find him an amusing old gas. Thirty men drowned because of you. Thirty? What do you mean? There were forty-five aboard, you know. With twenty-nine, Mac. Twenty-nine, thirty, what does it matter? This big, skinny Nazi is sneaking that dark with his mission not completed. Oh, now, as a matter of fact, we were only joking, mister... Nobody was drowned. What are you talking about? Twenty-nine. <laughs> Your sense of security is a little delayed, one arm. Don't you call me one arm. Oh, sorry. What's the time, Dundas? Quarter of. You ought to be over the Goodwin Sands. Got enough water under you? Oh, yes. The Goodwins won't be exposed until low tide. That would be at uh, midnight. That's right. So we get a fast ride back anyhow. If he lets us come back. Yes, yes, yes. How do we know you won't kill us when we let you off? You have my word. Oh, John, dear. Don't take on, dear. I can't help it. I'm frightened. Let her come back here with us. No. See how tough he is? Shoots women. If necessary. I'd like to see you get that close to me. Oh, would you? Yes. Now, uh, look, Nancy. I'm walking toward you. Matt, don't. You're asking for it, you know. You bloody Nazi pig. Don't take another step, Captain. Fuck, Mary. I... Oh, God, no. He can't hear you, girl. Don't slow down, one arm. I want to get him aboard. He's dead, one arm. Very dead. He was a good man. He deserves burial. And burial is got. Burial at sea. Now push your throttle back up. No. Your wife is next, one arm. Dundas. Well, that's better. And now, we continue our little voyage. In just a moment, we continue with... Suspense. The world keeps you company when you keep a radio by your side. A network like the CBS Radio Network, which serves America from coast to coast through its affiliated stations, can take you anywhere important news developments are taking place, can offer you the kind of drama that lights up the sky on Broadway, all in the same day. A network like the CBS Radio Network can bring the nation's biggest dance bands to your party on the beach or to your living room at home. And talk about stars. CBS Radio is the network that brings you entertainment by Arthur Godfrey, Art Linkletter, Robert Q. Lewis, Rusty Draper, Mitch Miller, Amos and Andy, and dozens more of your favorite performers. It brings Hollywood to your doorstep. It puts London, Paris, Rome right next door, like the world on a string. It's yours for the listening today, tomorrow, and every day that you're tuned to CBS Radio, where the world keeps you company. And now. We continue with the second act of Flood on the Goodwins, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. How much longer, Dundas? About an hour. I notice you change course from time to time. Why is that? The channel current. If you ride with it, you'll make better time. I see. And you'd like to be rid of my company as quickly as possible. What? That's right. <laughs> I'm glad you're being reasonable. The old man was a fool. You think so, eh? Of course, and so do you. Why do you say that? Uh, you've seen the war. You know how it is. That's right. I know how it is. Candice, don't. Well, what's wrong, Mary? Don't talk to him. He killed Uncle Mac. It's not right to talk to him. Oh, but we find each other very interesting, Mary. Don't we? Oh, yes, indeed. Tell me, how did you lose your arm? 
Oh, yes. That was a navigator. And a very good one, I dare say. So they said. Mm. Did it happen over England? No. Bremen. Bremen. I see. You chaps did a very thorough job in Bremen. Yes. You ought to be complimented. Thank you. Dundee. Relax, Mary, relax. Oh, Dundee. You must understand, Mary. May I call you Mary? Uh, you must understand that it's a very extraordinary thing for the soldiers of warring nations to get together for a chat like this. Take a nap, Mary. Take a nap? Yes, why don't you? Here, you can pull this tarpaulin over. No, 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 not that. Huh? It's uh, got blood on it, that tarpaulin. Blood? But really, the old man was over there, don't you see? Not his blood. Uh huh. We spent the day picking up after you. I see, and you used the tarpaulin for the body. <laughs> yes. Well, then, Mary, of course, we mustn't use that. Oh, please. Please, may I go back to where my husband is? No, you may not. Why? Why? And I'll tell you why you may not. You two are desperate, despite your husband's conversational manner, and I should like to avoid the possibility of your rushing. <laughs> you see how it is, Mary. I'm sure she understands. Just be very quiet, my dear. Everything will be all right. Of course, a lot depends upon you, Dando. Why do you say that? And that spanner you picked up about 15 minutes ago. It's right behind you on the ledge. On the thwart. Thwart, then. Thank you. It's right behind you on the thwart. Would you mind dropping it overboard like a good fellow? Well, that'll be a foolish waste. Wartime, you know. Spanners are hard to come by. I'm sure. If I not slide it over here, then, huh? All right. Oh, no, slide it. Even if you could hit me accurately enough to disable me, the gun would go off. I know. I know. Yeah? Thank you, Don. Now then, where, where were we? Soldiers from warring nations. Oh, yeah, yes. You know, it's a remarkable meeting, really. It gives us a chance to refresh ourselves on what it is we're fighting about. Don, this is fighting men who sabotage ships. Was, you mean, don't you? Was. Now I fight nothing. And I envy you. I, unfortunately, am still able, and so must carry on. I find it a little difficult to... Excuse me. What's wrong? Navigation. I have to check my course. Oh, by all means. Uh, what course are you steering? Why did you come and look? <laughs> no, I don't think I'd better. Why not? Well, you may have another spanner there. Perhaps you'll try to take my gun, in which case I'll have to shoot to kill you, and... Then where would I be? I, I might steer all the way back to Dover without knowing it. That's so. And then I'd, I'd have to kill your wife so she wouldn't inform. You see how it is. How do you know I'm not tricking you? Oh, I'm sure you're not. If we don't arrive by three, I'm going to kill her anyway. And, and then if you should continue to be stubborn, there are ways of forcing you. You mean uh, torture? Now, ordinarily, torture is very difficult to accomplish alone, but... In your case, one arm, it should be comparatively simple. Yes, in my case. Don't worry, I'm taking you where you want to go. And I'm counting on you to keep your word to allow a safe departure. Of course. I don't believe in Dundas. Why not? Because you are what you are. And because Dundas might know something your people want to find out. Dundas, don't you see? They will torture you. He's lying, Dundas. Please, Mary, please don't worry. You have my word. My sacred word on my honor as a champion. There, you see, Mary. We have nothing to worry about. Your wife seems to have gone to sleep at last. Good. Poor thing, she's very tired. You know, you're a lucky man. Why? To be home with a lovely wife, to be out of the fighting. Yeah, I suppose I am. No, I'll be glad when it's over. You will think it'll be over soon? No, oh, quite. You've heard of our buzz bombs? Yes. No, that's only the beginning. We're developing weapons a thousand times as terrible, or oh, ten thousand times as effective. Really, tell me about them. Well, there are rockets, the like of which the English have not dreamed. Rockets that can travel a hundred miles or three hundred miles. No one knows what their range will be. Radio control, speed about 30,000 miles an hour, altitude 60 miles. And what they will carry, I'd leave to your imagination. Why leave it to my imagination? Huh? You wouldn't tell me about all this highly secret business that were your intention to let us go, now would you? I'm sure your agents know all this by now. I don't know. 
But something tells me you've come to a decision about us. How much longer till we reach shore? Not long now. I'm bringing her into a deserted beach a few miles outside of Ostend. I see. If you look ahead, you may see the shoreline soon. Straight ahead? Yes. Well, that's impossible. The fog is much... <laughs> I've got it, Dan. Give me that Here, darling. Stand back, fellow. That's it. Now raise them good and high. Oh, Dan. Good work, Mary. I thought he'd never drop his wrist. I waited and waited. Here, here, Mary. Take the wheel. Hold that course. Yes, darling. Remarkable woman, your wife. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, there's no cartridge in the chamber. It's pointed at your gut. Why don't I pull the trigger and see if you're telling the truth? Perhaps you'd better not. I don't see why not, if it's empty. No, no, it's, it's, it's loaded. Huh? I thought so. You, I, I... I wonder if you're the type who can kill the man he's facing. I don't know. I've never done it. Oh, it's very difficult, you know, really. Just, just think of me as a fellow human being. Flesh and, and blood, like yourself. Think of the infinite genius that went into making this body of mine, the skin, the muscles, the arteries, veins, organs, vessels, and the blood. The blood. Murder is a very difficult thing when you're face to face with your victim. I know. I don't feel as though I could kill you right at this minute, but uh, suppose I try. All I have to do is squeeze the trigger ever so little. Wait, no, you don't. Why not? My life is, is worth a lot to me. More, believe it or not, than, than my pride, my honor, my love of Germany. Much, much more than that. All right. Have you a proposition? Don't do He's still married. I know what I'm doing. Yes, you, you keep out of this. What's your proposition? Money. Money. You're, you're going to need money, aren't you? A one-armed man is a, a difficult time of it in peacetime. Jobs are hard to get. Go on. But I have several accounts in London banks. Big accounts. I, I can write you a check. You can cash it tomorrow. How much? A, a thousand pounds. I can't hear you. Tell this what are you doing? Two thousand. Three. Five, then. That's all the money I have in the world. How much do you have on you? Oh, yes. In the briefcase. A hundred and fifty pounds. I get it. Don't move. But the briefcase, I... I'll take care of that after you leave. Write the check for five thousand pounds. Dundas, please don't do it. Your wife doesn't seem to understand. No, this is the way of the world, my dear. Dundas. And for this consideration, I let you off at the beach. Of course, I want to warn you against mentioning my name. Of course. Yes. It's your chance. Thank you. Uh, Aren't you going to shoot me now? No. A bargain's a bargain. I'll follow through. You are an honest man. Deal's a deal. Yes. yes, that's right. I'd better take the wheel. Give me the gun, Dandis. No. Please, Dandis, please let me hold. No, Mary. Well, why in the name of heaven ain't I? You can't steer and cover him at the same time, not with one hand. If you take the gun, you'll shoot him, Mary. I know you. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. That would be dishonest, Mary. We've made a deal, this man and I. Yes, 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 a, an honorable deal. But how to steer and all, that does pose a problem. And Mary, bring me that big spanner. What are you going to do? Since I can't handle the wheel and the gun, and since Mary's not to be trusted, I'll, I'll keep the spanner for just in case and solve the gun problem very simply. Dundas, you fool, you idiot. And you, sir, you'll find a fishing line with lead on the end of it, right up there in the front locker. Huh? I'm going to slow down. They're almost there. You'll do the sounding for me. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. You deliberately threw the gun overboard. You're selling out. Five thousand pounds, dear. The Yanks put it... That ain't hay. I have the line. Throw it ahead of you. Then feel when it touches bottom. Then measure the depth by your spread arms. Your girl. Oh, Dundas, Dundas. I know the war is a shock. You're losing your arm, though, but don't do this. You'll regret it the rest of your life. Bottom. How deep? Two, three, four, five. Five, that's all. We're closing in on the coast. Swing again. Right, sir. We'll hear the surf in a minute now. Not be very strong, low tide, you know. Two, three, and a half. All right. Get ready to jump. Jump? This boat hasn't got wheels. You'll have to walk the last ten feet in. Oh, all right. Get ready. Here we are. The minute you feel her straight bottom, jump out and push the bow around. Right, sir. Dandy, dandy. Here goes. 
Good night. Good night. Saka. Why Saka? That check. The bank is short of funds for the day, my son. Oh, really? You uh, found the beach? Yes, yes, I'm on it. Take a few steps. Oh. You'll see. It stopped. It's water beyond. The bank is short of funds. That beach is short of sand. Where am I? You're on the Goodwin Sand. Dover is just six miles that way. Which way? I didn't say. And if you're thinking of swimming, I can tell you you don't stand a chance. You see? You want our murder. It's low tide now, but wait a while. In a few hours, it'll be ten feet over your head. Drowning is not pleasant, Nazi. If you had your gun, you could shoot yourself. You could hang yourself with your belt. But there aren't any trees. So... Think about those men you drowned today. Think about them while you wait. I may be around to pick up your body, too. Maybe. Wait! Wait! Good night, Lota. starred in William M. Robeson's production of Flood on the Good Winds, written by David Devine and adapted for radio by James Poe. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with America's Boyfriend, starring Mercedes McCambridge. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Supporting Mr. Marshall in Flood on the Good Winds were Hans Conried, Ellen Morgan, Raymond Lawrence, and Richard Peel. <laughs> 